It is Monday the 18th of September, this is Travel Jack's Journeys, <coughs> episode 8, South Wales Holiday. Roll the titles. My name is Daphne, and in this program I'm taking on a journey. So, welcome to Trapjack's Journey. Good morning everyone, welcome to episode 8, the South Wales Holiday. Now in this part, in this first part of five parts, we are going to Cardiff. It's going to be the usual train plan down to Cardiff. Basically Arriva Transvaal's premier service, you know that. Uh, waiting for the 0701 Arriva Transvaal service to Aberystwyth. We'll take that as far as Shrewsbury. Calling up Wellington and Shrewsbury due there at 720. And then we're on the 810 Arriva Transverse Premier Service to Cardiff Central. That one calls at Hereford, Newport and Cardiff Central due to Cardiff Central for 9.58. Then coming back on the 17.16 Arriva Transverse Premier Service to Hollyhead, taking on as far as Shrewsbury. Calling out just got to check it because I always get them wrong. Going out Newport, Cumbrian, Puntitut Port in Newin, Abergwenny, Hereford and Shrewsbury. Due back at Shrewsbury for 1908. Then we're on the 1933. Arriva Train Spar Service to Birmingham International. We take them as far as Talford Central. Going out Wellington and Talford Central. We're due back here for 1953. Now in part two, it's the start, it's officially the start of the holiday. It's been down Cardiff for a couple of nights. Um, that train plan in for part two is actually the same as this one. The difference is we don't come back. Instead we come back in part five. Uh, I'm gonna film the train coming in. In the last part, well in the last episode of episode seven, 158841 turned up. So that might turn up today. Sit back and enjoy this episode of episode 8, South Wales Holiday. Here comes my train, this is the 0701 Arriva train to our service to Aberystwyth. We will be taking this far as Shrewsbury. It is one five eight eight two five. We're now on one five eight eight two five on the O seven oh one over to our service to Shrewsbury. Take as far as Shrewsbury called that Wellington and Shrewsbury. I'll film on the approach into Shrewsbury and I'll film the rest of the route.
it's like it's like Rex and I'll do the extra to Rex and it's another guy. Right, everyone, it is 7.23, we're now at Shrewsbury. Just waiting for the 8 Tenere of Jones Wells Premier Service to Cardiff Central, taking them all the way down to Cardiff Central, pulling out Hereford, Newport and Cardiff Central. I'm going to try and sit closer to the locomotive, but I don't know which end it is, until it turns up, unless I can find out. Just behind me is 158841. Even though I'm not catching it, it still shows up. You watch, you'll show up in Cardiff later in the week. Here comes, here comes my trains, the 8 Tony River trains as primary service to Cardiff Central. Oh, 67 is leading. 67. This is 67.016 operating the itinerary of Transwell's Premier Service to Cardiff Central, calling at Hereford, Newport and Cardiff Central. I'll do a little bit of filming. 67 is leading. It's showing DVT training coming back. We're now leaving Shrewsbury. Next stop is Hereford. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard this Ruby Trains Wales Premier Service from Holyhead to Cardiff Central. We're going to be stopping at Hereford, Newport and Cardiff Central for just before 10 a.m. At the rear of the train today you'll find a buffet car. They've got hot drinks, cold drinks, snacks and delicious cooked breakfasts. Uh, by all means make your way down to the hatch where you can get service. Alternatively you can upgrade to a business class seat uh, where the breakfast is included. If you are interested in this, please stop me on my way through. I'm going to be coming through to check tickets and passes, so please do have them ready and available. Thank you.
Sure. both ways. I like doing the 67. I do this all the time. That's a very lovely ride. You'll see the views. And of course we're doing this in part two which is coming up next. And then part five we're coming back on this. At the end of this part we are also coming back on this. I booked a hotel in Cardiff but not for the Monday night. So the first the parts are being filmed from a hotel. So we'll be starting and finishing Cardiff on those days the views because they are fantastic. Just in between Shrewsbury and Church Crescent.
about to pass through Church Stratton. Hills and the Cardiff Valley and the London.
just just running between Craven Arms and Ludlow. Here comes the Ludlow station. Um, Hereford
quick just run between Lampster and Hereford, a bit further down the line there. We will shortly be arriving at Hereford. This is Hereford. We're, we are now leaving Hereford. The next stop is Newport. Not Newport in Telford. And we brought South Wales. Thank you. 
Albany between Hereford and Aberfreny.
just running between Canberra and Newport South Wales. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, we're currently on the approach to Newport. Please change here for routes towards London, down towards Bristol and the remainder of the English South Coast. To open the door please lower the window and use a handle on the outside of the door. If you leaving us here, please make sure you take all your personal possessions with you and take care while waiting the train. After Newport, the train will make its way to Clive Central where it will terminate. Thank you for driving the route trains by us today. This stop, Newport. Thank you. Shortly after arriving at Newport, Chelsea, Doctors, the Bristol and London Paddington also services to Chelsea Star. This is Newport. As the HS2 just arriving in. We're now leaving Cup Newport. The next stop is Cardiff Central, where the service will terminate. Yeah. As the Great Western Railway Class 158.
We will shortly be arriving at Cardiff Central, where this service will terminate. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're currently on the approach to Cardiff Central. This train terminates here. Please make sure you take all your personal possessions with you. Do take care while we're the train. I would like to thank you for traveling and reading trains with us today. Hope you have a pleasant day. This stop, Cardiff Central. Thank you. Right everyone, it is 9.58, we've made it into Cardiff Central, what we're going to do is film the 67 going out, then we're going to go sightseeing, but then we're also going to come back here later on and do a couple of hours train spotting. In part two we are coming back here, So, and there will be some night spotting coming up as well, we might be able to go on one of those pace of buses over there, not the 67 because that's what we're catching tomorrow in the next part. The pace of bus we might be able to ride on one. So I'm looking for some 150s and some paces as well. Over that way, that's, that's Canton Depot. There's actually a class 70 down there. Yeah, so what I'll do later on, I'll explain the train services even though I'll probably explain them later on in the episode as well. So welcome everyone to Cardiff Central. We was here back in episode 18 where we was going to go around the city, we did Swansea. So we we'll found the 67 going out, 67.016. There goes 67.016 back going to Camden Depot. There goes a pacer. One four two eight seven six. Here comes the 158 going to Newport. 158 830. There's a great Western Railway 158 952. There's 158 822. There goes 158 822 going off to Maestay. Last time I saw that train, that my safe one is actually a pacer. Right everyone, it's 10.24, we're now going to head into Cardiff City Centre and go and do some sightseeing. We might jump on the Cardiff City sightseeing tour bus as well. Right everyone, that is Cardiff Castle. Just down there is a you know, city sightseeing tour bus. What we're going to do is go, what we're going to do is going to take a ride and have a look around Cardiff City Centre. I prefer going on a bus, it's easier. This is nice and this the weather's alright at the moment. How long it'll last for I don't know. I might, have, I might go for Cardiff Bay or I might do a full trip 
I do go over at Cardiff Bay, I'll have about half an hour there looking around. But to be honest, we've got five parts here, so it's alright. Might get a look in the castle at some point. lodgings at first floor level. The church bells of St John the Baptist behind us would indicate when the gate was to be closed in the evening for curfew and open in the morning. To our right, the Hilton Hotel, started life as an office block in the 1950s, converted in 1999 to a five-star hotel at a cost of £20 million. Pounds. The Friary Gardens is on our right-hand side, and the statue there is on the third one, so we two, about two months ago. A remarkable man who was very studious. He went to Oxford where he studied history. During his lifetime, he studied 21 languages. He spoke Welsh. He studied Welsh, but he spoke or studied 21 languages, including Russian and Hebrew. Why Hebrew? It took him seven years to learn Hebrew. He was very devout and wanted to read the Old Testament in the original language, which of course was Hebrew. It was his wish that when he died, his heart be buried in the Mount of Olives in the Holy Land. And that is what happened. It was placed in a silver casket and transported then to the Holy Land for burial there. It was he who in 1898 sold 59 acres of land to the Cardiff Council for the building of the Civic Centre. One condition of sale is that nothing should be built on Friary Gardens. Owner, a barrister, he became a judge, passionate about the Welsh language, he wanted judges to be bilingual in English and Welsh. On our left we have City Hall, opened in 1904, cost £130,000. The lead covered dome is immediately above what was the council chamber, it's 50 feet across. Keep looking left, between the last two flagpoles you see a statue of a man on a horse. The horse, Sir Briggs, the man, Lord Tredegar. He, at the age of 23, led a troop of Lancers in the Battle of Balaclava in the Crimean War of 1854. Immortalized by Tennyson's charge of the Light Brigade, horse and rider survived, and Lord Tredegg was, um, was present when his statue was unveiled in 1909. We do come back down this road incidentally, so I'm going to talk about uh, what's on our left, and, and that is the Gorsed Gardens. Gorsed is a Welsh word meaning a throne. As we move forward, you see a circle of 12 rough-hewn standing stones. You can see it through the gap if you're at the front here. In Wales, we have cultural competitions called Ice uh, with uh, poetry and dancing and choirs and all the rest of it. The National Ice moves around the country, and at least a year and a day before it's coming to a particular place, the Archduke of Wales stands at the centre of a circle of stones to proclaim its coming in the future. They actually take their stones around with them now. I suspect they're made of fiberglass. To our right we have the museum. It's closed today because it's Monday, it will be open tomorrow. It gained its charter in 1907. Foundation stone 1912, officially opened in 1927. It's free to go inside as are other, you know, all museums in Wales. So got some good exhibits and a very fine, very fine art gallery. It's 750 square meters of art gallery with historical works, contemporary works, but also French Impressions and Post Impressions paintings. Manet, I've been in for a while, but last time I went in there was one Manet, Monet, Renoir, Cézanne, works by Degas and Rodin. 260 pictures 
were bequeathed to the people of Wales by Gwendolyn and Margaret Davis, two worthy spinners, the sisters. To our left, the Queen Alexandra Gardens, named after the Danish wife of King Edward VII. There are various memorials here I'll just point out too. The large stone on a plinth, I hope you will see, do the cooking and they do the waiting, under supervision of course, and getting training. They provide breakfast, lunches and afternoon teas on a daily basis and then Wednesday to Saturday they do evening meals by prior appointment. As I said, it's run by, the prison, by prisoners. So really it's a win-win situation. There'll be accolades for the food, so we get good food. Um, and from the point of view of the prisoners, they are getting um, training. They get their qualifications in catering of some kind. And they're getting job experience too. And I think some have actually got jobs. So a really good start for them. And uh, it just strikes me as a brilliant idea. Well, we're making our way it's all the doctor's area, very busy whilst the school is quite cold, that means it's not coming to me, and very busy in the war years when they worked around the clock. But after the war it became very derelict, and so in 1987 the Cardiff Bay Development Corporation was formed to revitalise the area. They had to spend some money on works of art, as you see on your left hand side with the blue flames and yellow sparks. And if you look fairly quickly to your right, second building in, it does say the bottom of the warehouse, so that's exactly what we want. It's situated at the top of the view, East Dock, just coming into view on our right. It's not used for that purpose now, and indeed this is not a working dock any longer. This particular dock would be East Dock in the 1850s, some 20 years after the West Dock. It's a very busy dock, it's sporting iron and coal. Importing timber, pit props perhaps. Some vessels had no cargo for the return journey would take rocks or stones on board to act as ballast. These were deposited on the dock side and could be used as building materials which you think they were. Some unscrupulous ship's captains put humans on board to act as ballast. So they didn't have that work, they need more than more than what they could uh, uh, sufficient weight I would have thought. But anyway, that's what happened. It was a highly illegal practice, and these poor folk were dumped on the mudflats outside car, didn't have to wade or crawl the shore. And it wasn't just here, it happened to the dock elsewhere too. The pagoda shaped building across the water is County Hall, opened in 1988. It had just over 40 million Welsh states on the roof. Left we have the Celso Steel Works, which is um, Spanish owned, headquarters being in Barcelona. The future inn to our right, like the hills of has 197 bedrooms, is three-star hotel, is Canadian owned, and uh, that's the headquarters of their European operations. So in this relatively small area, we have two examples of inward investment into, into Cardiff. We're Cricket, of course, are played here, like water rafting and canoeing, etc. Uh, we have good shopping, we have a large student population, we have quite a lot of service industries, so employment within the city, and visitors like yourself, lovely to have you on board uh, uh, on this tour. So I'm just waiting until you can see what we're going to talk about now. Coming into view in front of us, in, the, in between the gap there, you can see a body of water there, very much a boat-shaped dock, more or less directly in front of us now, we've, we've come to a stop. Uh, that was a commercial dry dock once, it always has water in it now, and it's no longer tidal. But at one, once upon a time, there would have been a bridge across that stage, uh, once upon a time, shipping would, in need of repair, could come in on a high tide into this dock, the tide would go out, and then repairs could be effected on the hull.
Shipping has come to these shores over the centuries. In 1327, Cardiff was made a staple or headport, one of only three ports in Wales which could deal in warm wine and leather. The first proper dock was to open was opened on the 8th of October 1839. It was financed by the second Marquis of Butte, and it cost £350,000, which is a lot of money. It is said that he looked at accounts books avidly. That would have been difficult as he had very bad eyesight, exacerbated by a fall from his horse. There's a very nice portrait of the second Marquis in the drawing room just by the window, also one of the third Marquis. To our left, this is the Rose Dock. It is a working dock, just no vessel in today. It's open in 1887. It has a key length of 1,215 metres and a depth of water of 11.3 metres. Ahead you've got the cranes around the Queen Alexander dock. You might just be able to inspire a little bit of water through the gap. That was open in 1907. It's larger, key length of 2,234 metres and a depth of water 11.6 metres. Queen Alexander came here with her King Edward VII on the royal yacht, the Victorian Albert, to, uh, to open the dock and they sort of cut through a, a red ribbon to, to officially open the dock. We are licensed for three cruise liners and this year we've had a few cruises actually leaving from Cardiff rather than just calling in, uh, which used to happen occasionally, we've actually had a few which leaving from Cardiff. And I've seen one advertised for next year. On our right, it's also still today, isn't it? This is the Roth Basin as opposed to the Roth Dock. Not a working dock now, fairly obviously. And to get into it, ships have to go through the uh, Queen Alexander Dock, uh, turn immediately left across the bottom of the Roth Dock and then left again into the Roth Basin. It was opened in 1874. To our left, this is the BBC Wales or BBC Cumbry Studios, which employs about 600 people. Here we film Casualty, Cobbler Pool, various children's programs and Doctor Who. We have a lady doctor now, don't we? And until earlier this month, there used to be the Doctor Who exhibition immediately in front of us. Sadly, that closed on the 9th of September, which is, to my mind, a great, great pity. But there we are, that's what that blue building was. Now, behind the blue building, we've got the World of Boats, where small craft are on display. And that's, I hadn't been there for a while, but when I went, I thought it was a nice, nice little exhibition. All under cover. no charge to walk across the barrage. It is in layman's terms a strong grassy bank which keeps the tide out and impounds the waters of the rivers Tap and Ely to create a fresh water lake. The barrage was opened in 1999. Uh, it took five and a half years to build and cost 220 million pounds. We do have a stop here. It might, uh, we, I used to say the Doctor Who stop. Well, better say the World of Boat stop now, I suppose. Does any, this is the bay now. Does anybody want the first stop in the bay? There are others in the bay which will take you further in. No one for this stop. That's fine. No one for this stop. Okay, so you've got the bay on that. Waters of the bay. Now, before the barrage, this would have been salt water at high tide and salt water mudflats at low tide. Plans were afoot to redevelop the area, and it is my belief that is why. Um, well, that is why uh, the plans were drawn up for the barrage. It was a very controversial project um, because this was a site of special scientific interest and the winter feeding ground for many migrating wading, wading birds from Skype. The fauna was going to change the barrage was built. So a lot of, a lot of uh, opposition on environmental grounds. There were other fears too. All were taken on board, all taken seriously. The plans were passed and now we have a freshwater lake, which does mean that pleasure craft can operate regardless of the time. The Norwegian church was imported from Norway in 1869 and registered the entrance to the West Dock and there the Scandinavians not in worship, they could spend leisure time. To our left we have a white mosaic memorial commemorating Captain Robert Fulton Scott's uh, ex uh, ex ex expeditions, his last one being uh, on leaving Cardiff on the 15th of June 19. Scott joined the expedition in Cape Town and they went of course to the South Pole 
Scottish party of four reached the South Pole to discover they had been beaten there by Amundsen, the Norwegian, and he and his party perished. They tried to return to base camp and, and their vessel. You can see a building in front and slightly to the left with a large awning, glass walls, and a wind vent. That is the Senate building where the Welsh government meets. The red coming out of the window is the weeping window. Those are the red poppies, like the head in London. In fact, I think they're actually from London. Uh, and if you're wondering how did they stick the poppies into the slate on the floor? Well, apparently they uh, put them on wooden tiles uh, which they have made to look like slate. So uh, they could hammer them in, I suppose. You can go into the Senate building, uh, there's no charge. Uh, it's a very environmentally friendly building. And uh, you can listen on debates if there are any debates. I think it's quite nice to look across the water at the, at the BBC studios and just look at the unusual facade. It's not to everybody's taste. I appreciate that. I quite like it. It's certainly not boring, is it? <laughs> um, so. There's the dock on your right from which Captain Scott's vessel, the Terranova, set sail over 100 years ago. On that little vessel, it was quite small. They had a crew of 65. They took ponies, dogs, food for man and beast, equipment, presumably fresh water, and coal. In fact, they came to Card to collect some free coal and express their appreciation for the considerable de generosity shown by the business community here in Cardiff. So we're now in the bay, okay, and I'll point out when we get to the stops and any other things you might want to look at. In front and on the left, we've got um, the rear of the Millennium Center for the Performing Arts. It's going to be on our left-hand side in a moment. It's, it was opened in 2004 by the Queen. It cost 107 million pounds. It's made almost exclusively of Welsh materials, Welsh wood cladding, Welsh slates depicting the cliffs of Wales, Welsh glass, I think that's from Swansea. Um, but the uh, carpet is actually from Scotland, I believe. In that building is a large theatre which seats 1,900 people. It's the home of Welsh National Opera and the BBC National Orchestra of Wales. To our right, we have the Red Dragon Centre where we have casinos, nightclubs, bars, restaurants, cin restaurants, cinemas, and our local radio station. The Norwegian church stood on that side. I have heard somewhere to say it was to our left, but it was certainly in the vicinity. So this is just pulling in now. This is stop number five. A good stop to get off and look around the bay, as indeed is our next stop, which is stop number six, which is slightly closer to refreshment places, really. It's not on the other side of the Pierhead building, which is by quite a short channel to the new east dock, the dock you have just seen. So vessels will come in on the high tide, no barrage then, into the basin, and then um, into their respective docks. The building on our right, it's red brick building, was the old post office where they kept the mail for the sailors until they arrived in port. One of the largest postal stamps in Britain. And we made into a part of that piece of that And the poorest building on the corner dates to 1889. This lovely building on our right here was a bank until a few years ago. We've got the packet on, the, on our right. This is a working pub, it so still is a pub. It's one of the old doctor's pubs. They kept the original bar, which I think that could tell some stories. And I understand that Shirley Bassey sang there as a youngster. She was born in Cardiff in 1937. She was um, a daughter in a single parent family. And uh, so money wasn't plentiful. She sang in the local pubs and pubs to get experience, but I'm sure any money would have come in very useful. Anybody for stop number six, Mermaid Key? Yes, please. Yes, please. I have forgotten you were there. When, when did you get on? I can't remember. Did you get on? In the 1950s. The stone building itself was a stable block until the... Uh, as a stable block but later used by ships, pilots, and skillful men who guided shipping into port. Everybody all right? Because I'm nattering away here. Are you all right? Our next stop is TechniQuest. Now, TechniQuest is closed on Mondays except in school holidays. But I have to ask, does anybody want to stop? And the answer, not surprisingly, is no. No one, thanks, Steve. TechniQuest on our left is a hands-on scientific discovery centre. Basically, children learn through just trying things out. What works, what doesn't work. And there are at least 120 pieces of equipment there for them to, to try. 
Havana Street to our left takes you to the Five Star St. Davis Hotel and Spa with, it, with its roof resembling a sail and to the 10 Acre Wetlands Nature Reserve. It takes its name from HMS Havana, a 42 gun sailing vessel which escorted, Napo which escorted Napoleon to his place of exile on St. Helena in 1815. The sailing vessel returned to Cardiff and became what was known as a ragged school. association with the Merchant Navy. They were granted the freedom of the City of Cardiff in 2001 as an honour. We're here on our left, got the maps to a primary school. I think it always looks a happy school to me. I don't know why, it just does. Got some, I suppose because of the nice colours, a nice bright uniform. Anyway, be that as it may, it's the maps to a primary school. The polygonal part is the original part that dates to 1995 and cost two million pounds. The reason I mention the school is because of the name, Mount Stewart. Mount Stewart used to be the family home of the Marquises of Ute who used to own Cardiff Castle, and that's all past tense. The Mount, uh, we do have a Marquis now, we're on to Marquis number seven. The Mount Stewart to which I refer is a magnificent house on the Isle of Bute off the west coast of Scotland. Very easy to get there from Glasgow, train to Weems Bay and a short ferry ride for about half an hour or so. Anyway, it's a wonderful house. It's still owned by the Marquis of Butte, but he doesn't live there. It's open to the public except in the winter. And it's set in wonderful ground. It really is lovely. So that's the Stuart part of it. Cardiff Castle, well, the Marquis of Butte doesn't own Cardiff Castle now. The fifth Marquis gave Cardiff Castle to the people of Cardiff on the 10th of September 1947 as a gift. Now, if you look left, just past the scaffolding here, look up Mount Stuart Square left hand side of the road is some more scaffolding but that scaffolding up there is around a barstone building uh, and it's the coal and shipping exchange <coughs> which cost 40,000 pounds when it was first built so this did building um, in it was is a, is a large hall and there the coal owners met there they set the price of coal and the first one million pound check with British commerce is reputed to be signed in that building the building has been cut or is it's still being converted, I think, but part of it has been converted into a five-star hotel. And the, the hall is still there, and they use that for functions and um, weddings and so on. Okay. So we've just gone round in a sort of circle. We're back at the Millennium Centre. But you can see the words in the facade now quite clearly, I hope. On the right, it says, in these stones, horizons, see. And to the left, excuse my accent, if I've got any Welsh speakers on board. Uh, Claire Weir, creating truth, for a good day like, like glass of four hours Owen from the furnace of inspiration. Now those are, those are words by Gwyneth Lewis. The, uh, the letters there are actually windows. Some of them are tinted. I used to think it was something to do with shadow, but they are actually tinted. And the bars behind, if you come down at night when the lights are on, it makes quite a sign. It's really lovely to see. Final stop in the bay, last one. Anybody for the final stop? No? Someone sort of jumped up there? No? That's fine. But you know the stop is here. No one, thank you, Steve. So if you do come down again and don't want to do the loop around, you can get on at five, say, do your stuff, and then come back perhaps to that stop. <coughs> don't think I mentioned Craft in the Bay, which we've passed now, but if you are coming down, Craft in the Bay is just behind us. And that's a good quality craftsmanship and materials, but I think I think I didn't have time and then I forgot it. Okay, so um, just in front of us on the left hand side, a very sad looking railway building. Um, it's one of the oldest in Britain, 1843 the date. Designed by Isabel Kingdom Brunel, famous Victorian engineer. And one of the last remaining Taffdale Railway buildings. And the Taffdale Railway was a small but prosperous railway company which brought a lot of the iron and coal down to the docks. It was not owned by the because the beauty of the land where the iron and coal was coming and he owned the docks. And even though the railway, if you, if you have a railway station here, as you see from the side, and there's a shelter on the platform. Ooh, lovely smell of grass. Hmm. In the heyday of the docks were 176 miles of railway in its vicinity and 16 miles of road. It was just chock a rock with uh, wagons loaded with iron and coal. Absolutely amazing. 
Now we have a single line track linking with the bay with Queen Street Station, not the main station, but Queen Street Station. And a shuttle service goes to and fro every 12 minutes or so. Beyond that, on our left, is a residential area, Butte Town, Tiger Bay. Shirley Bassey was born there in 1937, but as a young child moved out to an area of Carter called Splot to our right, you can't see it from here. And that's where she went to school. It's a funny word, Splot, isn't it? I looked it up once, it's an old English word meaning a patch of land. And one of our former guides used to say it was associated somehow with a church. And she was a very knowledgeable person, and uh, I don't doubt that for a moment. You can say it in my dictionary, but that's probably right as well. Now the Butte West Dock, the first dock to open, was behind the apartments on our right hand side. It covered about 18 acres. It could take 300 vessels at a time under bread, which does seem a lot. And it was filled in in the 1970s. Much of the film material coming from the Aberfan tip disaster of 1966, when a tip slid into a primary school. Some of you will know that about the facts and film just now. Um, he would visit Cardiff Castle just twice a year, generally speaking. But he died in Cardiff Castle in 1848. He was only 54 years of age. He himself had been widowed. He married twice. So he left his second wife as a widow. She was 38 years old. And he had son from the second marriage of just six months old and children from the first marriage. And this little baby became the third Marcus, about whom I have spoken a, a fair bit at the beginning of the tour. Many people turned out to pay their respects as the cortege came through Cardiff. Um, and he is buried in Kirtling in Cambridgeshire alongside his first wife. Now we had a canal coming through Cardiff and we're following the route of the canal now, just briefly, because the canal then veered off, where well, it says Peppermint, in the canal veered off there. And we're going straight on into St Mary Street. Does anybody want the St Mary Street stop? For shopping? No? No one, thank you? Yes, I think someone's noticed this lovely building on our left. There used to be a shipbuilding yard there, the River South Road, quite close to the street once. Then that went up as a hotel to sell the railway, it's now Weatherspoon's Pub. And it was roughly in that area that the south gate of the town once stood. Lovely buildings, all round cards really, but look at some of this decoration, very, very highly decorated. decorated. Well, it says bar and barbecue, and look up at the top, it says Philharmonic Hall, 1876. The Prince of Wales started life as a theatre royal, then the Playhouse, now the Prince of Wales. A theatre, then a cinema for, for quite a while, and that's a Weatherspoons pub. Now they've recently done a refurbishment and I haven't been in to have a look, but the, the, previously they had retained the features of the theatre. I suspect they still have, but I'm not sure because I haven't been in the last couple of weeks. I might do that on my way home just to have a quick look. Uh, Welsh National Opera performed their first performances there, all amateur at that stage. One of their singers was a butcher in Swansea. And she used to do that during the day and then sing at night. I mean, they must have been worn out. The clock in front of us, the mechanism at the base comes from the red brick building, the pierhead building down in the bay, and it tells you about it close by. To our right, the Royal Hotel, 1866. Captain Scott and his officers were entertained to dinner there two days prior to their departure for the South Pole. The men, as opposed to the officers, there's always a clear distinction between the two, eight elsewhere, and their menu was just a third of the price got the railway station through there to the left just so you've got your bearings of it. Straight ahead we've got uh, another Portland stone building, the same stone as the Civic Centre and indeed the same stones as, as, the set, as the Central Station. This building was built as the post office in 1896. It's not the post office now, it has the Civil Constitution Centre. Mercantile courts. There seems to be quite a large range of issues dealt with in those courts. Beautiful building. It is listed. This is the front of it. It says post office, but it is not the post office now. Just bear that in mind. This is Westgate Street. The River Taff used to flow along this street. It was straightened out in the middle of the 19th century so the railway could come through the Lisbon River. In front of the right where it says NCP, the Romans built a quay there in the 1st century, Lima was stone in the 13th century, at that town quay until the river was straightened out in the middle of the 19th century. Coming up on our left we have the Principality Stadium, opened in 1999 for the Rugby World Cup. It seats about 73,000 people. The statue is of Sir Tasker Watkins, VC. Oh, anybody for the stop? No one? 
Okay, lovely, thank you. Yes, so Tesco Watkins gained his VC in France in 1944, um, and he was president of the World Rugby Union. Good to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. The old Grand Hotel on our right is not a hotel now, but it's typically Victorian, I think, with all its decoration. The ancient hotel on our right, the old part takes to 1883, four-star hotel, 102 bedrooms. It stands on the site of an old coaching inn called the Cardiff Arms, which is how we get the name Cardiff Arms Park. Once perhaps one of the most famous sporting venues in Wales. Male coaches, such as coaching horses, flying between London and Milford Haven, carrying Irish males used to stop there on a daily basis. The last male coach out of Cardiff was in 1850 when the railway took over that function. We have the animal ward in front of us, behind which is 400 acres of park. One entrance is the grand entrance just on the road. There's no charge to go in the park. The animal wall used to be in front of the castle. It was removed to its present location in the 1920s, where the road was widened. At that stage, six additional animals were added. The original animals had glass eyes and were carved by Thomas Nichols, who carved the fireplaces in the castle. Right, everyone, it's just 12.15. We're here in Cardiff City Centre. Having a look around the sites. Uh, we're actually going to be looking at the sites throughout the five parts. Of course, we will be catching trains. I thought I'd come down here early and just have a nice couple of hours in Cardiff. We've just done the tour bus. Very nice tour it was. Show you the view of Cardiff City Centre. I think we're on Queen Street, so which means Queen Street train station is around here somewhere. Uh, we will be going down to Cardiff Bay to do the Cardiff Bay shuttle line. Not sure if we're doing that in the next part or the part after that. I'm not too sure. And how we feel. Uh, in the next part, or I'll explain at the end of this part. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, we'll be doing some train spotting later on in this part as well. That'll probably be the next link. Right, so everyone is just coming up to Just gone to half past two. We're going to do some train spotting for the next two and a half hours here at Cardiff Central. Even though we're going to be doing quite a lot of train spotting over the next few days here at Cardiff Central. Here comes a pair of paces. I'm going to terminate here. On the print, it's 143622. Well, Alright, trains going that way, go up the valley lines, then over, the, over a bridge, and the trains going to the left, go down to Newport, then on to various destinations, including Shrewsbury, Manchester, Holyhead, London, Paddington, Bristol Parkway, Taunton, and Ports. Portsmouth Harbour. There goes 175007 going to Manchester Piccadilly. 
via Shrewsbury. Goes 143 624 going to Croydon. There goes 152 52 going to Murphy Tedville. There goes 15232 on the 1500 Great Western Railway service to Taunton via Bristol Temple Meads. There goes one four three six zero four. I'm one four three. Oh wait, two ten two. I'm there. There goes 66 438. Right, everyone, it's 
1547. It is absolutely raining then. Don't mind. When you really are in Wales, in Wales sometimes it does rain. What we'll do in the next episode, I'll explain the train services. About to do it now. Great Western Railway operate four trains an hour to Newport. Two go on to Bristol Park, Bristol Park, Bristol London, Paddington. Two go on to Bristol Temple Ridge and on to Taunton or Portsmouth Harbour. One train an hour goes to Swansea. Reaver Trains Wales operate the Valley Line services, which we're bashing that later in the episode. Also, one train an hour to Manchester Piccadilly coming off both of Haven or Carmarthen. Also, services to Cheltenham Spa and Leicester. And one train every two hours to Hollyhead. And Notting Cross Country operate one train an hour to Nottingham via Birmingham. That's it from Cardiff, we'll be back here in part two. I'll film the 67 coming into Cardiff. I might try and do a little bit of filming on it. You didn't let me have a talk with a DVD. Here comes my train, see 1716 or even Transvaal's primary service to Hereford. Oh, sorry, Highly Head, take this far, Shrewsbury. Spark, and Gunning Pike, Hastowick, the functional hamper, Holyford, Hasquent, Lily, and Royal. We are now leaving Cardiff Central. Yeah, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is Arriva Trains Wales Premier Service to Holyhead, calling at Newport. 
Come from. Ponty Paul Newin, Abergavenny, Hereford, Shrewsbury, Wrexham General, Chester, Flint, Rill, Colwyn Bay, Plantin Junction, Bangor and Hollyhead. We have business class seating area located towards the front of the train. Any passengers who wish to upgrade to the seating area can do so by means of a second. Also there is a buffet located towards the front of the train. Serving hot or cold food and drinks. Passengers can please have their tickets ready for inspections with rail cards, our passes and inspections will be made throughout the journey. Next stop is Newport. Any passengers who are unfamiliar with the service to open the door, please use caution opening the windows and using the external handle to open the door before taking care to step from the train onto the platform edge. Next stop is Newport. Thank you. Leaving Newport. We are now leaving Hereford, the next stop is Shrewsbury, where we are lighting the train.
service we'll be catching that in part two Operator of the 1933 Rift Trans Rail Service Chief. 
Beck International takes first. Tough Central put out Wellington and Tough Central not going to film it because it's quite dark out there. Time for to end this part. Went on the UE of Trans Wales Premier Service to Cardiff. I was in Cardiff, we went on the Cardiff City Sites here in Torbus, had a look around. And then we came back on the Premier Service and now we're back into Shrewsbury. Uh, that's it from me. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Coming up in part two is the officially start of the holiday. We're going down to Cardiff and we're also going to Bristol. I'm going through the first Welcome of two trips through the seven tonight. We will be calling at the following principal stations Wellington, Telford Central, Wolverhampton, Tilford Central, 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 Tilford Still to come on episode 8. That's coming up. That's coming up in the next part of episode 8.